What's the deal, YouTube world? Hey, look, we're going to switch it up a little bit this time because I'm pretty sure by now most of y'all in the trucking community have heard about the uh, major news about that driver in Colorado. All right. So, um, you know, as an insurance guy myself, I figured it was a good time to talk about this subject. All right. Because there's very important lessons that can be learned from anybody else's experiences. All right, so we're going to dig in to what's really going on because it's a couple of things that I want to point out to you guys, especially the new guys coming into this industry. All right, so look, we already know that from a business standpoint, trucking is literally one of the highest risk industries that there is in business. All right, think about it. Anytime a load is getting moved or hell, even loaded and unloaded for that matter, somebody somebody's life could be at risk, all right? This is a very dangerous business. Don't never get it misconstrued. That's why when you start looking for these policies, they want an arm and a leg and they want to dig into your background because you could be the next person who's in a situation like this gentleman in Colorado, all right? Let's never forget that, people. Don't kid yourself and think otherwise, all right? So look, knowing that, let's dig into what really happened. And y'all bear with me, cause I'm new to this uh to this whole uh internet stuff. So I'm trying to figure out, we're gonna read this article together. Uh, hold on. Hold on. All right, so look, man, this guy got 110 years. You got people who committed murders not doing that type of time. You know, uh, this is crazy. Now, am I? Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying by any means that consequences shouldn't be met for this driver, right? But when you start digging into the details of what they say happened, I feel for him because he shouldn't be the only one getting that time. And we're going to get to that here in a second. But let's dig into the article about his charges and everything, right? So as you guys know, uh, and for those that don't, it happened in Denver, Colorado area, all right? So look, the semi-truck driver convicted on several charges in connection with the April 2019 crash on Interstate 70 that killed four people was sentenced in a Jefferson County courtroom Monday, all right? This driver got 110 years, all right? And the judge even felt bad for him. But you know, there's mandatory minimums in some of these states, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But sticking to the topic, that's a lot of time that this young man, when he when this happened, he was 23 years old. Okay. And as you can tell by the name, you know, no disrespect to that uh, the community, much love to you. But you know, I've been doing this a while, I lived in South Texas. I know what it is. So as I look into the background, he just got here recently, all right? He had just gotten to this country recently and was working, trying to provide a living, all right? So, you know, I'm digging more into it. I'm like, hold on, man, this is crazy. And being that this is our industry, I had to figure out what's going on because either this was a suicide mission or there was something else going on, all right? So look, uh, driver got 42 counts include vehicular homicide, first degree assault, attempted first degree assault, reckless driving, and careless driving. All right, so let's see here. So the, the incident happened on April 25th, 2019. He was driving a semi carrying a load for the lumber eastbound on 70 from the mountains into Lakewood. Now, in a, in a listen, for those of you who don't know, it's a reason people do not want to go through these mountains. Okay. This is not <laughs> this is not the ideal place, especially for people who are not from that area. Okay. So, you know, that's that's number one. The area itself tells you a lot. Okay. So he told police that he had lost control of his brakes. And when he encountered traffic that was stopped because of another crash on 70, he drove onto the shoulder before crashing into traffic at the Colorado Mills Parkway overpass, all right? 28 vehicles, including four semi-trucks were damaged or caught on fire in the wake of the fiery crash. 
Investigators estimated he was going at least 85 miles an hour just before the crash, all right? Four people died. Sending my condolences out to the family. That's a terrible way, you know, anytime something like that happens on the road, no matter if it's just regular cars or semis, you know, I mean, you know, it's very dangerous on these highways and byways. And this is also should be a cautionary tale to people who drive recklessly, you know, in and around these semis. But don't let me get on a tangent. But look here, condolences to the family, you know, very tragic accident for all parties involved. Okay. The driver was working for a Houston-based trucking company at the time. And we're going to dig into this company here in a second. All right. But during the trial, for all my drivers out there, listen clearly. Because listen, once you get that CDL, there's a target on your back. You got the, your regular cars driving recklessly and may even be out trying to file a claim against you. You know, that's very big. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about that. But not only that, you got to be worried about protecting yourself and your family. All right. And that's by protecting your livelihood. Your CDL is your livelihood. You know what I mean? And, and best believe when you're ever in a situation, you're the professional driver. You're the one they're going to come down hardest on. Here's an example. And I think they were trying to make an example out of this guy combined with the fact that he was in a state with mandatory minimums. All right. So, look, the prosecutors argued that the driver could have taken steps to prevent the deadly crash, including using a runaway truck ramp miles before the crash and that he made a bunch of bad decisions instead his defense attorney claimed he did not know the truck's brakes were smoking or that he would not be able to stop his truck though others testified at the trial that they had seen them smoking all right so before the judge handed down his sentence family and friends of the driver spoke in support of the 26 year old his attorney argued that his actions were a series of negligent decisions and he was overwhelmed with the situation. All right. So the driver showed a whole bunch of remorse when he came to the stand. You know, that's a tough situation to be in. All right. So now let's talk about the reality of this situation from a driver or an owner of our perspective. All right. You're coming down the hills, the mountains, you got a full load on you. OK, he's a rookie. You can tell by his age and just being new to the country, he doesn't have years of experience. So even an experienced driver will be uncomfortable in that type of a situation, especially if they've never been through this area. OK, so Houston based company, they're taking freight to the West Coast, probably chasing dollars. You already know what that's about. All right. So this is we're going to talk real. We're going to talk raw. All right. So now you out here. All right. And then this driver who's not used to this experience loses his brakes on a on them in the mountains, family. What is he going to do? You know, everybody can say what they'll do in certain situations until they've been there, especially when we're talking life or death. OK, so it, my experience in life tells me that he probably just blacked out. Once he realized what was going on and that he no longer had control of that truck, I think he just blacked out and he didn't know what to do. He figured maybe I can pull over to the side and hopefully it'll work because that way I'm not directly going to hit people, but eventually you're going to run out of shoulder because you can't stop the truck. All right. So, okay. Now it started making more sense to me. They said he wasn't drunk. All right. No, no drugs whatsoever. Didn't have his phone in his hand. It was nothing negligent that he could have done to prevent this, except the equipment. Now, there could have been some evidence of the brake failure coming. All right. So here, let's go get into the company. This is why this is going to come real important. So look, as an owner of myself, a guy who's never driven, I don't drive. All right. I run the logistics end of our company, but I know all the stories. I understand how dangerous it is. I don't never play them games that you'll get from other brokers or other people. Driving is a serious bit. This is a serious job. It's a serious business. It's not nothing to be played with. And we need people out there who are professionals and value what they do. And we need companies that are going to make that possible for the drivers. All right. In this situation, the company is more at fault than the driver, in my opinion, and here's why. Okay, so let's get to the, when they get to information about the company. Okay, so the 
company that he was working for is Castellano 03 Trucking LLC. And they put his information out, so the company information should be out too, okay? Castellano 03 Trucking LLC, okay? So hold on, let me make sure you guys can see this. I told y'all I'm new. Let me go get it, let me get it right, hold on. All right, new article. All right. All right, now we're in there. So look, here's the company right here. All right, this is who he was working for. All right, so look. They got hit with 30 safety violations, okay? Including for brake issues and a weak grasp of English. All right, now that could be subjective, but who knows? This is what they put though. OK, so these are the type of violations that this company has been racking up, because remember, you get your authority, all your information for that company is now public information. Right. So when something like this happens, you already know they dig into every detail of that company as they should. Right. So look. DOT record shows that the company employs five drivers and owns five trucks and trailers. All right, they are authorized. Everything is good on that end. All right, like I said, they had 19 inspections. Oh, hold on. 19 inspections over the last two years and 30 violations came from those inspections. All right. Over that time period, drivers have been hit three times for having chafing or kinking on their brake tubes and also for having their brakes out of adjustment, respectively. All right. Drivers for the company were also found to have three violations for having an automatic air brake adjustment system that failed to compensate for wear and was found to have inadequate brake tubing or hoses, among other violations. OK, so now we get into the detail of the company. OK, they started to look a little different. So look, the driver's brother and brother in law both told reporters last week that he had called after the crash and said he lost his brakes in the mountains prior to the crash. He told police, according to an affidavit for his arrest, that his brakes were not working and that he tried to use his emergency brakes without success, all right? But they're saying video from the mountains allegedly show him driving erratically and driving and, and directly past a run runaway truck ramp designed for semi-trucks that are out of control. He eventually slammed into traffic that was already stopped on eastbound 70 near Denver West Parkway. The crash caused an explosion and fire that eventually killed four people. All right. So look, they say the video shows him driving erratically, but that goes to him blacking out. Now, here's the part where it's, you know, it's subjective. Experienced drivers are going to always say, well, he missed the runway ramp, right? He missed the runaway ramp. But We've already been seeing that prior to the company, the company's history, they already had violations for drivers who didn't speak good English, all right? They may not even be able to read every sign. You never know. I'm really in this business, and I know how we deal with a lot of people from all over that come here, and they get companies putting them in the trucks. Come on now. We know about the Russians out in the Midwest. They doing the same thing in Texas. Like, let's keep it real now. All right. So we don't know. All right. All we get is the afterthought of what really happened. So we can do the Monday morning, you know, armchair quarterback situation. But the truth is, he said he was driving erratic. He lost his brakes. What you think he going to be doing? He ain't going to be driving erratically. And now knowing that this company has a history of their trucks having brake issues or just overall not keeping the maintenance up to par. Because, I mean, come on. Brakes is one of the most important things we talking about towing anywhere from 40 to 50,000 pounds down the interstates now for you guys who run heavy like that. You know what I mean? The brakes ain't nothing to be playing with. You're playing with your life, literally. And this could be one of them companies who try to put off all the repairs, you know, trying to cheapskate. That's what it looks like by what the documentation shows, right? So look, the truth of the matter is, you know, reading this article, so it, it even went on to say some more. So in August in Kansas, and in December in Indiana, the driver or drivers of one of the fleet's trucks, 
they give the plate number, was found to have violated a rule requiring drivers to understand highway traffic signs and signals in the English language. Another violation says driver cannot read or speak the English language uh, sufficiently to respond to official inquiries. All right, so look, this is giving you some insight into the company. All right, so let's say the company put a, a driver that's inexperienced in that truck, sending them out to the mountains with a full load of lumber, a uh, full load of lumber, right? Knowing that you're cheapskating on the maintenance of this truck, more specifically the brakes, but the brakes is all we know of. It could be more, who knows? And you may or may not have a driver in there who doesn't understand all the road signs. How is that not a recipe for disaster, family? Because stuff happens in trucking. Same thing could have happened if your steer tire blew out. You know what I mean? So, hey, look, the truth is, I blame me personally. The company should be just as much to blame as this driver because 110 years is excessive. Even the family of the victims said they didn't want that. All right. That's just a win for the so called justice system. But like I said, that's another video for another day. But as far as trucking is concerned, all right, you, this is why insurance companies aren't in a rush to sign on people for commercial insurance for trucking. This is why, because there's going to be more and more of this as these highways become more and more uh, unsafe. So my message to you guys is anybody watching this video, hey, look, for the drivers out there, take your license serious, all right? This is the extreme, but even little tickets and anything, because you're a professional driver now, the stuff that you do in your personal vehicle, all of this stuff matters, all right? You guys have a very important responsibility, all right, when you're on this road, and also to the people who are around you. Keep this in mind when you're around these semi-drivers. Don't be driving crazy to force them in a situation. They cannot maneuver the way that you do. But most importantly, to the company owners, that own equipment, especially if you do not drive. Do not play with these guys or these girls' lives out here, all right? Keep your equipment up to par, all right? Now, that don't mean that every time a driver call you, hey, the, the tire have a little bit of wear, we just got them two months ago. I mean, come on, within reason. But certain things, come on, your brakes, that's not, you, you're playing with your guys' lives out here, all right? So this is a message to a lot of you owner ops, or people who want to go work for other trucking companies, if they won't take care of their equipment, they won't take care of you. And that's the real, all right? So once again, you know, we switched it up this time. I'm going to do this from time to time, y'all. All right, so y'all tell me what y'all think below. Leave some comments. Tell me what you think about this situation. I want, I especially want to hear from my drivers, uh, the owners, passive owners, whatever you your capacity is in trucking. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this situation, man, because this is crazy. Like, this is setting a major precedent, and I think that, you know, changes are going to come behind this. Who knows? But like I said, leave comments below. Like the video, man. You can talk You can talk crap to me. It don't matter. Disagree, agree, like, love, whatever. Show me some engagement, all right? Subscribe to the channel, you know. We're going to be doing this weekly, all right? Once again, it's your boy, Monte. I'm out. You know, thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.